All right, so I want to go over solving literal equations for a specified variable, specifically equations involving exponentials and logarithms, because that's one of the things that you're doing this week is solving things with exponentials and logarithms. And this will give you kind of a good understanding of what's going on um, without having to throw in word problems and everything like that in it at the same time. So let's just kind of review what the, the, the things are we're allowed to do when we're solving. So when we're allowed to solve, we can add or subtract the same thing from both sides. We can multiply or divide the same thing on both sides. Uh, one thing that we haven't actually done, but you are allowed to do is take the reciprocal of both sides. Um, we can raise each side to an exponent, like you can square both sides. So we did that when we we're solving radicals. You can take the root of both sides, like take the square root of both sides. We did that when we're um, solving certain square or certain squared or quadratic problems. So these are all things that we have seen so far, things that are we are allowed to do when we solve. And the key is whatever you do on the left, you have to do on the right. You have to do it on both sides of you know your equation. We are now introducing two new actions that you can do when you're solving. So you can exponentiate each side. Um, I don't think this word is actually used in the textbook, but basically it's just you're taking your equation and you're turning those into exponents. And so this is this ability to do this is called the equivalence property of exponential expressions. And then we can also take the log of both sides. So we can take like the log base 10 on both sides or the natural log on both sides. And we do this specifically so that any uh, variables that are in the exponents get out of the exponents. And this is called the equivalence property of logarithmic expressions. So th these are the two new things that you can do to solve. And this is what we're going to be using um, in, in this, this week, basically, to solve these types of equations. So just to review literal equations, we talked about this, I think, way back in, um, I think the textbook references like 1.3 and maybe 1.6. So way back at the beginning of the class, a literal equation is an equation that contains multiple variables. And there's usually more than two variables. It's usually mostly variables and very few numbers in a literal equation. And usually, these are formulas that we're talking about. Like the Pythagorean theorem is a literal equation. It's all variables, but you can use it to solve and, and find certain things. So the quadratic formula is a literal equation. So um, we're going to be basically solving these for a specific letter or variable. And we're going to be using our rules of solving, but we're, these are all going to be ones that involve exponents. Uh, where your variable is in the exponent or you're going to have a variable inside a log or a natural log and that's where we have to use these special techniques so i only have like four examples um, to give you a good handle on what the steps are so that way when you start doing it with numbers and all that stuff you, you kind of see what's going on so we have this this equation q equals q naught so that is actually a zero in the subscript, and it's read out loud as Q naught. Um, it's N A U G H T, which is like a, it's not ancient, but it's an old word that means nothing, hence the zero symbol. But it's Q naught E to the negative K T. So this is a, a, a uh, formula that comes up in chemistry is usually used with de decay of like radioactive ice isotopes. You can also use it for um, any kind of thing where you, you have something that's decreasing over time. So usually it's, you know, you're, it's something that's like radioactive, but there are other things in chemistry that decrease over time. Um, the rate of reactions usually slow down over time. So you can use this equation there too. But this is actual formula that is used in chemistry. So we are going to solve this for k. So we need to get k outside of the exponent. And so far, all of the things that we have learned, all the steps for solving, 
don't really teach us how to do that. We've never really had a variable that we're trying to get outside of the exponent. So I'm going to just kind of break this down and try to color code stuff as best as I can. So I'm going to start by rewriting our equation. So our goal, we need to get k. And right now, the k is part of, it's part of the exponent on this e to the negative kt part. So we have to first get that part by itself before we can deal with the exponent, because that's all attached together. So our first step is going to be dividing both sides by q naught so we can get the e part by itself. So I'm just going to divide both sides by q naught. Now these are literal, literal equations, which means that nothing is simplified. But what's nice about literal equations is that it shows exactly the steps that you're doing. And these are the same basic steps that you can follow once you start solving with numbers. If you're in this form and you have numbers instead of variables, you're going to be using the same steps. So that's the advantage of doing this. So we're going to divide both sides by whatever is in front of our e. Now that you have your exponent by yourself, or the e to the um, negative kt by itself, we need to somehow get this k out of the exponent. And we do that by taking the natural log or the log of both sides. If it's e, you take the natural log because e and natural log, they are inverses. They cancel each other out. So we're going to be taking the natural log of both sides. And so I usually kind of just try to sneak that in by writing it in front. So that's our next step. So we're dividing on both sides, and then we're going to take the log on both sides. So on the left, because we're not dealing with any numbers, you just literally are having the steps that we're doing here. So we have the natural log of q over q naught. And then the natural log and the e cancels out. So all we are left with is the exponent. That's why we're taking the log, because it allows us to cancel out the exponent. So just as a side note, natural log of e equals 1. And so whatever that exponent is goes in front. And then that's basically 1 times the exponent. So it just cancels things out, and you're just left with the exponent. So we are trying to solve for k. So I keep highlighting it so we know what we're looking for because we have so many variables here. Um, it could be, you know, you can lose track of what you're looking for. So we need to get rid of the negative and we need to get rid of the t. And we're going to do that by dividing both sides. So we're going to then, it's for step three, we're dividing again. But this time we're dividing what was in the exponent with it. So we're going to do divide both sides by negative t. And when you do that, those are going to cancel and you're left with k. So we're going to get k equals, and then when you divide by a negative, you get a negative, and then it's going to be the natural log of q over q naught divided by t. And now we have solved this equation for k. So one of the things that this could be useful for is let's say you are reusing this equation. You're using this formula, and you have numbers that you're plugging in, and you are looking for k a lot. If you're doing this a lot, you could put in the numbers each time and then solve for k. But it's better to find a formula for k, and then you can just plug your numbers in and then plug it into a calculator versus doing your solving. 
So that's one of the reasons why we teach solving literal equations like this is because, um, you know, one place where you might be doing this is if you're programming. Um, you, you can't, writing a program to solve is really hard, but writing a program to just plug in numbers and then do some math is easy. So if you have an equation that you're trying to solve, putting it in a different form, solving for the variable you want first, and then just plugging in numbers is easier to program. So instead of putting numbers into our Q formula, you can put it into the K formula. This is also helpful in Excel, because if you're doing a lot of calculations in Excel, Excel doesn't solve. So if I need to define K and I have some information in Excel and I'm trying to use some Excel documents or some cells and information, there's no formula to do that for me. I would have to figure out what K is first, the formula for it, and then I can use it in Excel. So that's another reason why we teach this, because sometimes, um, depending on what you might be doing in your job, you might have to just look for data a lot or look for the same numbers over and over again. And having a formula to do it usually saves you time in the long run. So um, this is one example of this with chemistry. And the key here is if you have something in this form where it looks like this equation, you just have numbers in different places, you know the steps. Your first step is to divide. Your next step is to take the log of both sides. Your next step is to divide again. So you actually have directions here and you have a formula so you can see what you need to do. So that way, if there's numbers, you just follow the steps and you're like, okay, this is in the, you know, I have the number two in the position where Q naught is. So I divided both sides by Q naught. So I'm going to divide both sides by two. You can do comparisons when you're solving and that can help you see you're like, okay, what are the steps are that I'm doing? So are there any questions on this first example? Okay, so here's a, a, a different example. This one now has the log in it instead of an exponent. And this equation is m equals 8.8 .8 plus 5.1 log d. And we're solving for d. So I had to look up this formula. This is an example from the textbook, and I'm not familiar with this formula. Um, all the textbook said was this is used in astronomy. I'm like, I don't know anything about astronomy. So I looked it up and this equation is actually used for telescopes to uh, just to figure out the, the maximum magnification basically that it has based off of the diameter of the lens. So D is the diameter of the lens and then the M is the maximum, uh, the, the magnification number. They call it the limited limiting magnitude. I don't know what the units are for any of this. I just looked up what is this equation used for. So that's that's what this equation is used for in astronomy. So we're solving this for D. So the first step is I'm going to just rewrite the equation so that I can start working with it. And our goal is to get D, but right now D is inside the log. It's sort of attached to the log. So we have to get the log by itself before we can do anything else. So that's, that's our goal is to first get the log part by itself. So when we're solving and trying to get something by itself, we usually do any addition or subtraction first, then you do your, your division or multiplication. So, uh, we need to get rid of the 8.8 .8 first because that's the, the addition subtraction that always goes first. So we're going to subtract 8.8 .8 .8 from both sides. So because we're not doing with any like terms, you're just literally writing what you're doing. <laughs> we're literally doing M minus 8.8, .8, hence the name literal. <laughs> And this is equal to 5.1 times the log of D. And so we're still trying to get the log part by itself. So I need to divide both sides by 5.1. And so we usually just create fractions like this um, 
just so we don't even really need to use a calculator. We, we don't worry about any of that. We're just writing the, the math steps. So our first step here was we're doing our addition subtraction step. So we had to do subtraction. And then we're doing our division step. So we have M minus 8.8 .8 over 5.1 equals the log of D. So now that we have the log by itself, we need to get D by itself. So we need to undo the log. And to undo a log, so this log, if it has no number, is base 10. And so if you take 10 to a log of something, that cancels out. And it just gives you whatever you're taking the log of. So if it's log base 10, and then you make that the exponent on a 10, they cancel out. So we, this is where we do exponentiation. And the way that I usually write it is I put my base kind of underneath so that they look like exponents. Because we're basically going to take our equation and make it the exponent. So we are exponentiating. Uh, there we go. <laughs> I'm trying to, it's a very long word. But we are allowed to take our equation and make it exponents. And we're doing that so that 10 to the log cancels out. So I get 10, and then I have this really nasty exponent. But we don't care if it's nasty because we're not really doing anything with it. We're just writing it. Um, and then 10 to the log cancels out, and we're left with D. And now we have successfully solved for D. So we had to do our addition or subtraction first, which is what we always do when we solve equations. Then we need to do our division, which is usually the next step for solving. Then we had to exponentiate, because that gets rid of the log. And that's what got us D, what we were solving for. And again, this way, if you had an equation and you knew the maximum the, or the limiting magnitude, you could just plug it in for M and then put it in your calculator, and then that would give you D. And that's handy, because if you have a calculator that doesn't do logs, you don't have to worry about it, because you've now created an equation that doesn't need the log part. It just needs to be able to do an exponent. Are there any questions? Okay. Here's a very, very common formula, the compound interest formula. We've seen this before. This shows up all the time in accounting. And this is probably the one of the most common things that you would might use in Excel. Because I use this in Excel, where I'm trying to figure out like how much interest I'm going to be making um, and trying to figure out like my amount. Or sometimes in this case, we're solving for R. So maybe we want to know what interest rate do we need to have in order to make a certain amount of money in a certain many amount of years, you know? So we need to know what the interest rate is that would get us our, to our goal. Um, if we plug that number in Excel with this formula, I can't solve, we can't figure that number out. But if we solve the equation for R, then I can put the formula in Excel, and then all I need to do is change numbers, and Excel will calculate it out for me. So this is this is one that is you know common that you might have to do in Excel. Anything with interest. So we're solving for R. So again, I'm going to just start. I putting this, you know, rewriting the equation. So this is, let's see, I'm trying to think what is, actually, let's not solve for R because we're not going to have to do any, well, yeah, let's, let's solve for R. 
So I'm, I'm just looking at this and I'm like, how, how do we solve this for R? We're not actually going to use the exponent or the log by solving for R. We're going to use something else, but I think it will be good to show you that trick as well. So R is currently inside our parentheses. So, and the T is attached to the parentheses. So I need to get that whole thing by itself before I can get to the R. So I'm going to divide both sides by P because that's in front of there. So we're going to divide both sides by P. And so you may notice that one of our common, you know, we, we like to divide first whenever possible. If we don't have any, any addition or subtraction to do, we divide. So this gives us A over P equals 1 plus R to the T. So we are trying to get to the R, but we need to first get the parentheses part by itself, but we need to get rid of that exponent. So there are two ways we can do this. We could take the log of both sides because that will get rid of the exponent. The exponent goes in front, but then um, we have a log and then one plus R inside the log. So then we have to undo a log. So that doesn't really kind of, it's not going to really help us. So there's another trick that we can do. And what you do is you raise, we're, this is, we're basically taking the root of both sides, but we're not using like a square root symbol because we don't really have any numbers. It's the same thing. You can take each side to an exponent. And I'm doing 1 over t, because when you multiply t times 1 over t, those cancel out, and you're left with 1. So your exponent disappears. So um, well, it's not exponentiate, just doing an exponent on both sides. So it's slightly different from exponentiating, where it becomes the exponent. Here we're just doing an exponent on each side. So that will allow our exponent to cancel on the 1 plus r. So we end up with a plus p over 1 over t. And then we end up with 1 plus r. So we've now gotten rid of the exponent, so we're just left with what's underneath. So now we're solving for r. So to get r by itself, we just need to subtract 1 from both sides. So this will give us r equals a over p to the 1 over t minus 1. And now you have a formula that you can put into Excel. And you can just make a uh, one of the cell. You can make a cell for A for the amount you start, or like that you want a cell for P for the principal, what you're starting with, a cell for T, how many years you're going to put it in. And then you can solve, and it will give you the interest rate, basically, based off of this formula. So we divided, we, did, we took an exponent on each side, and then we do our addition subtraction step. And that gave us our formula for R. And you can do something similar. Um, you could solve this for T. You could, um, you're probably solving for P is not really useful for it because you already know what you're going to plug in. But you can also figure out for t, well, how many, how long, if you're solving for t, that would be if you want to know how long do I have to keep it to make a certain amount of money at a certain interest rate that I'm that I know. You can create a formula. Then once you have that formula, put it in Excel, set up, you know, um, numbers and everything, and then you've got a you've something that you can use and just change numbers for versus solving the formula over and over again.
Are there any questions? Okay, so this is my last one. Uh, and this is used in meteorology. I That's what the book says. I tried to look up this formula to see what the variables stand for. Um, I, P is probably pressure. I don't know if A is, I don't know what A stands for. I tried to look it up, I actually couldn't find it. So <laughs> all I know is what the book tells me, which is that this formula is used in meteorology. But we're solving this for P. So P is inside a natural log right now. So I'm gonna start by rewriting my formula. So we're solving for P, but P is inside a natural log. So we need to get the natural log part by itself before we can try to get P by itself. So I have a negative one over K that I need to get rid of. So to do that, I can multiply both sides by negative K. So I multiply by negative so that the two negatives cancel out and then the reciprocal of one over k is k. So that gives us the natural log of p over 14.7 equals negative a k. Once you have that natural log by itself, you need to isolate, kind of get rid of the natural log so that we have what's inside the natural log. So we need to get that part now. So our first step, we did our, we multiplied. Step two here, we need to exponentiate. So different from when I wrote exponent on this side. Exponentiate means that's what we do to get rid of a natural log or a log and natural log cancels out with E. So we want to make E the base and we're creating equations out of, or taking our equation and making it the exponent. So I'm kind of writing it underneath there. And so the E and the natural log cancel out. So we just have P over 14.7. And then on the right, we have E to the negative A K because I basically made our equation into an exponent here. So now we're solving for P. So we want to get rid of P, or not get rid of P, get rid of 14.7. So we're going to multiply both sides by that. So that we can have just P. So step three, we're multiplying again. And this happens a lot when you're solving. When you're solving things with the natural log or exponents, you tend to kind of have to do steps over again once you do the exponent part or the log part. So this will give us P equals 14.7 E to the negative A K, which is actually an easier looking formula than the original formula was. So now we have a formula that if we know what K is and we know what A is, we can just plug it in and then it will give us P. Are there any questions? Okay, I wanna go back to our first example here because this is a common one that you have to solve. So I'm going to do give us a similar one as this, but with numbers, and then we're gonna solve for K with numbers. 
so you can see how it's similar, so that you can see how we're basically doing the same steps here as we do when numbers are involved. So let's say we've still got, um, we have our formula Q equals Q naught E to the negative K T. And we're given that Q is, let's say, um, 500 grams, and we started with, let's say, 1,000 grams. So let's just, just amount to something. I'm just kind of making this up as we go. And we're looking at what happens after five hours. So I'm just making up numbers here so that we have things to plug in. So let's say you have a word problem. You have this formula, and you're given this information. So this is our starting amount. This is our ending amount. And then the time it took to go from 1,000 grams to 500 grams. So you start by plugging in your numbers. So we got 500 equals 1,000 E to the negative 5K. Because you're basically plugging 5 in for T multiplying by K. So I can just put that number in front. And so we're solving for K. So just like we did here, our first step was to divide by Q naught. I'm going to divide by our Q naught for what's in front. I'm going to divide both sides by 1,000 because I need to get the E part by itself before I can get the K part by itself. So I have to get this part by itself first. So 500 over 1,000 is equal to 0.5. Oops, I wanted white. So we have, no, oh, no, now I accidentally hit the black instead. 0.5 equals e to the negative 5k. So our first step was to divide. Step two, we're taking the log of both sides, or in this case, the natural log, because we're canceling out the E. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to have the natural log of 0.5 and then the natural log of E to the negative 5K. I don't really like putting it up there, so I'm just kind of scribbling it in. We're taking the natural log of both sides. So on my calculator, because now that we have numbers, I'm going to do the natural log of 0.5 on my calculator. And when we deal with numbers, it's good to round to four decimal places. That's usually enough so that you don't run into rounding issues. So the natural log of 0.5 is negative 0 0.6931. And the natural log of E to the whatever cancels out the, the E, so I just have negative 5K. So we just did step two, take the log. Step three, divide. So it's a lot easier when you see it with numbers, but we divide both sides by our negative 5 because we're solving for K. So... I'm going to just do that on my calculator, and then I'm going to just round to four decimal places to be safe. 0 0.1386 equals K. So what we did here is we solved the literal equation with variables. And when you do that, what comes out of that is you see what the process is. You see that the process to get it by itself is you first divide, and you can see what, what you're dividing by. Then you take the log, and then you divide again, and that gets you your final answer. When you do it with numbers, sometimes it's harder to see that process, but you can see that we did the same thing. We had numbers, but we did the same thing. We had to divide both sides. Then we had to do the natural log of both sides. And then we had to divide again, and that got us K by itself. So this is the advantage, and this is why we cover the literal equations, because it's a way to teach you the process 
the in the process sometimes gets lost when you try to do with numbers. You 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 pay more attention to the numbers and not to what you're actually doing. But the process is basically giving you a formula or a step by step thing to follow every time that something is in that form. So whenever you have something in this form, now you know what the process is, you know the steps. And we learned that, we got that by doing the literal equation. And now you also have a formula that if it's in that form and you need to find K, you just have to plug in all of your numbers into this thing. So let's even test out our formula. So our formula here that we had found was K equals negative natural log of Q over Q naught um, over T. So, so let's test and see if our formula works. We have a negative natural log of 500 over 1,000 and divided by 5. So I can do that on my calculator all at once. Um, as long as you know where you need to have your parentheses and everything, you can do it all at once. And when I do that, I get 0 0.1386. I get the same exact formula or same exact number. So our formula works. So the advantage of having a formula is that once you've done it, you just get the you just have to plug numbers in and that'll work every time. So there's like multiple advantages to having the formula is that now you have something that works every time if it's in that form and you're looking for K. And it, give, it tells you it, it's a way to learn the process because that's what you follow when you're solving as you look at the process. And that's, that's, you know, understanding the process. If you can get that down, you can get algebra down because algebra is just following a series of rules. So if you can do it and know what the rules are, then it doesn't matter what the numbers are. You know what to do. So any questions? Okay, well, that was all I had for solving these um, literal equations. So now you, you should be able to go and solve equations involving exponents and logarithms because now you kind of know what the steps are. Um, and you know, you cancel out an exponent by doing a log or a natural log. You cancel out a log or a natural log by doing an exponent. So they kind of cancel each other out. So now you should be able to do that homework and do some of the, the homework that involves word problems because a lot of the word problems are, here's a formula, plug in your numbers, now solve for what, whatever we're looking for. Sort of like the example that I, that I did with the, uh, the cube, where you start with amount, you end with amount, and you're look, you, you, know, you have the time, you're solving for something else. So um, that should be enough to get you started on the exponential and logarithmic stuff this week. And then the second, right, it's like the last homework that you, you cover is uh, linear systems or systems of equations. And that's also covered again in pre-calculus. So if you have to go on a pre-calculus, don't worry so much if you don't quite get it because you'll, you'll see it again. So, all right, so week eight, <laughs> last week of the class. Um, Thank you for coming. I appreciate it that you, you made it here. Um, so hopefully these have been helpful throughout the term. And if you have any questions throughout this last week, of course, you can email me, you can give me a call, you can send me a message through Remind, whatever works. Um, tomorrow I'll be sending out a notification of like, here's what's on the final exam, tips for studying and that kind of stuff, because that's gonna be really important to do is to do the final. Um, you don't want to miss that. So, all right.